Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here. We're in the, on location at reInvent, Amazon's Web Services annual user conference, our 11th year of CUBE live coverage, bringing you team coverage this year, bigger than ever for SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. Our entire team's expanding, we're all here. We're getting more interviews, more editorial content, more signal than ever before as AWS continues to thunder along. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante. We also have Rob Hofe, Mark Albertson, and Shelly Kramer, our new analyst who just joined the team. Check her out. Dave, we are rocking on 11th year of theCUBE. Um, and Adam Selesky on stage, his third keynote, and got to say, he crushed it. And of course, we had the preview, we nailed it. Um, although he didn't reveal, he kind of connected the dots, but I thought we put it together beautifully. And I thought it was a very strong keynote, notably on point, the pace was great, but serious jabs at Microsoft. And I think the undertone was, we are not going to let you or anyone else say that we're behind an AI. We're going to flex it. All the naysayers out there, we're different. We're reinventing. This is who we are at AWS. You know, all the pundits, all the analysts out there uh, that are saying they're behind. I heard a great keynote where he's basically like, we're Amazon. Trust us what we've done, our track record, and how we've continued to have the experience and track record to establish a reinvention philosophy and playbook and they laid down the goods. I thought it was a great keynote. You know, it started out a little slow. Oh, here's our customers by all verticals. We're number one in everything. All the top people work with us. And then they went into the generative AI and the, NP the GPUs with NVIDIA, home run. So just, we had a lot to unpack here, but I thought it was an exceptional keynote. Probably his best ever, um, given the, what was on the table, the risk that what Amazon was facing with the public perception. I think that has been, um, the, the gauntlet has been laid down. There's no question this was his best keynote ever. And John, first of all, it's great to be with you <laughs> doing the editorial here. Inside the sugar cane, thanks to MongoDB for giving us this space. Awesome, supporting our editorial with an in-kind contribution. Love that. You absolutely nailed the preview. If you, if you, read, if, if you read John Furrier's preview to AWS reInvent this year, it laid out all the themes. I will say this, John, no question it was his best keynote ever. He was relaxed, he was, he was really, really solid. But I do think he buried the lead. To me, the most important part of this presentation and the strongest part of his keynote was when he basically said, look, you can trust Amazon with your generative AI. Privacy, trust, security is, is central to what we do. It's built in, it's designed in. And after the open AI meltdown, I thought, I thought leading with storage was like, okay, great, they're going to lead with object storage. I guess that's because it went back to the beginning of time for AWS, but I thought by far that was the strongest part of the presentation. He did say a number of times, John, we're the only cloud provider that has. I don't know, I got to do some research on that. For example, as you know, as you pointed out in your article, Microsoft does use other LLMs. Llama 2, yep. Llama 2 for example. Yep. And, but there's no question that Amazon is laying down the gauntlet and saying we have the greatest optionality and you heard from Pfizer. I thought the Pfizer gal was extremely strong. Yeah. We heard from her the importance of having that LLM optionality and we know that from our own yeah. experience. Yeah, and, I, and the other thing that, that jumped out I thought was notable was, I'll get into the Jensen interaction, but when you're in, yeah. in person you can really see the vibe. And, and I have a lot to comment yeah, yeah, on that. Yeah, me too, but uh, uh, you were there in person. <laughs> I was watching in my room. But I think the, the revolutionary aspect for some of the demos and some of the product that they announced is significant, and I'll tell you why. Some of the things that they demo with the use of AI with the scale that they have and the unique Nitro capabilities is going to give them unmatched performance. Okay, and cost reduction. The Java application porting thing at the top of the stack, that alone is going to cost savings. Developer productivity and cost alone. There's so many areas where Amazon's going to address the cost problem, whether it's energy on the power envelopes or price performance on application developers and time. So what jumped out at me was this whole cost with us is less, performance is high. So this is classic, Dave, price performance battle right now, and I think the battle for AI supremacy, our featured show we're running this week out of our Palo Alto studio, is all going to be all about price performance. We're going back to speeds and feeds. Hardware matters, Dave. And you're going to start to see a conversation where... Everybody's talking about that now. Okay. Well, like, once again, we were like ahead of the game on that one. <laughs> we, we called that two years ago. Um, <laughs> I'm sure other analysts will take credit for it as well on, on their show, uh, but that's not the case. But that's going to be a big driver. And again, back to Selevsky, and I thought the risk at this event, and you pointed it out on our Cube pod, was Amazon gets the last word of the year in terms of event. 
the risk of this show was if Adam didn't hit a home run, reminds me of that Pat Gelsinger keynote he gave at VMworld, like that one year he was kind of on the hot seat. He hit a home run, changed the game, did the deal with AWS, with Andy Jassy, that changed the game. This was that seminal moment for Adam Slepsky because he set it up beautifully. Okay, he came out, you know, talked about the future, talked about the customers, but when he got into the making the case of why AWS, he simply said, we work back to some of the customers, we think differently, we're kind of a quirky culture. He didn't say that, but that's the word that they use, Jassy, Adam. Amazon's a quirky, innovative culture, and they're going to stick to their knitting, Dave. And then he was like, hey, this is who we are, okay? We're always reinventing. And what they want to do is give people access to the technology that they have. And I think there's an opportunity for them to be the supercomputer for the cloud. They can be the super cloud, Dave, because if you look at what's going on in the announcement, I thought the GPU silicon was going to be a war between their custom silicon and NVIDIA. I was blown away that Jensen came on stage because um, DGX Cloud, Amazon was not included. Remember I mentioned that uh, yeah. when they did that, so now he's on stage. Amazon's infrastructure absolutely is the glue layer for scale around GPUs. And the fact that they're, they're dropping mega GPU love, DGX on AWS is, a, is NVIDIA's AI factory, they called it. 16,384 GPUs connected in as one giant supercomputer. That's 65 exaflops. So okay. 3,000 supercomputers, essentially. And then the MV Link, one terabyte per second, is it going to be a key linchpin as they start creating these clusters. Is that InfiniBand? <laughs> <laughs> MV Link, 32 Grace Hoppers connected as one unit with Nitro. And I, you called this with Nitro, okay? I got I to gotta say, the Nitro innovation the is yeah. the enabler, and what's going to, what Amazon's going to do is, that's going to be their differentiation their ability to use their existing tech in this kind of like connective tissue between chips. And like we said in the post, it's not just the chips, it's what's around it. And you're going to see Amazon just have the best cloud, the super cloud of, of, the, of the market. So that NVIDIA thing caught me by surprise. I thought they were kind of like posturing, but. I, I thought it was a little bit awkward. I mean, you were there, but see, I've seen Jensen probably, I don't know, seven or eight times this year at various shows. <laughs> so it, the guy is just, He's on message. So at Dell, John, he was talking about AI on laptops, okay? At Snowflake. He's a chameleon. At Snowflake, he's a chameleon. At Snowflake, in the same jacket, he's awesome. At Snowflake, he was talking about bringing, you know, supercharging Snowflake data. At HPE, talking about on-prem. Uh, at, 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 at Ignite, he was talking about in, in the DGX cloud. Amazon doesn't have, I mean, yeah. Adam didn't have, he kind so of a geek, right? So Adam didn't have that long-term relationship like Jeff Clark does. I mean, they've been hanging out forever, yeah. doing laptops together in gaming. So that was, I thought, a, a little bit awkward. But nonetheless, the fact that they're, they're putting the DGX cloud inside of Amazon is a huge, huge move. But it's essentially a me too to what Microsoft just announced. Well, it's a me too from a Jensen standpoint. He's selling more GPUs. He's an arms okay. dealer. So he's an arms dealer. But He's kind of right, Amazon's got the best product. So to me, I've been following the DGX cloud and I think it's a separate play, it's a super cloud play for yep. NVIDIA to be the connective tissue between all clouds. But NVIDIA doesn't have Nitro yet. So up on stage, I was really close to the stage, I can see the interaction. They didn't really look at each other much. Jensen also took the, when Adam set him up to do the plug for their deal, he, took, he went into sales mode pitching NVIDIA, basically. Yeah, right. So he kind of was like hit prompting him. Just enough, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm addressing the deal, but don't forget, NVIDIA's got an AI factor. NVIDIA's got this, NVIDIA's got this, and we bring that to you. So it's kind of like two chieftains going head to head, like, wait, it's my show, you know. You, we would do, get, get the plug in there. And, 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 and Jensen was playing ball. I mean, he, he's, he's like, yeah, he, sure. No, he played ball, but if you squint to. through it, you see NVIDIA up there, like, look it. Yeah, we it was know, a we know you're doing custom silicon. We're going to do our thing. You're a big customer, you know, frenemies or whatever you want to call it. That was definitely an interaction, but. Keep but, buying. But he can't, be, he can't diss AWS for this future strategy uh, uh, because he's selling so many GPUs. And when I talked to Adam on one-on-one, -on -one, it was very clear and then he laid it out with the graph. There have been 13 year history between the two companies. So what you're seeing with, with Jensen is, is that they're a huge customer of NVIDIA. So it's, all this kind of posture, I've seen this in other, other ways, is that you look at, people always have hedges going on, they have a hedge, okay, maybe NVIDIA DGX is a hedge to get them to buy more, 
or hey, we're going to go to other clouds. And I think if you're, if you're an arms dealer, let the best cloud win. And if they got super duper nitro and some you know, high speed inter interconnect between on networking and make those clusters super fast, advantage AWS, good for them. I mean, they had to get Jensen here because he was on stage with Satya at Ignite this, you know, last week or the week before, last week it was. So he had, to, he had to do that. I want to go through the announcements real quick. S3 Express uh, One Zone, that's high performance object storage. Okay, Ob high performance objects been around for a while. I'm glad they, they got to it. Uh, Graviton 4, big fourth, shock. Fourth generation. We know that was coming 30% yeah. faster, blah, blah, blah. Maybe even better for database. 45% faster for Java. One of the things that, um, that Graviton is not great for is old Java code. Okay, so they talked about their Q, which is their co-pilot, being able to regenerate and, and migrate Java code. That's going to be huge for a lot of that legacy Java code. They also announced Tranium 2. He talked about their AI stack. You laid that out in your piece. He talked about Q, as the, which is essentially their co-pilot. He yes. didn't use the term co-pilot. But that's interesting, and I want to talk about that a little bit, get your impression of that. But, it, I mean, look, Microsoft led with co-pilot. It's the co-pilot era, yeah. it's here. You know, again, that was kind of a, a, a we have co-pilots too, but I, I really like their emphasis on AI safety, privacy, and trust. The demo of Q for business users was phenomenal. The Q for developers was phenomenal. The fact they can migrate code, the ID, the ID support's not there yet, but they got to have that. So, okay, code version for developers, check. The business side was killer. The demo that Matt Wood gave was, I thought, very great. Two steps, you're done. Um, connect your data, 40 applications out of the box, Google, Salesforce, all the stuff there we is use. A, there is a but here, John, right? Because the perception, of course, before the OpenAI meltdown was that Microsoft and OpenAI had the lead, and they did. But one of the things that Matt Wood talked about, or maybe it was, yeah, it was Matt Wood, he talked about the semantic knowledge getting into the system via vector embeddings. And the issue right now for Amazon is those vector embeddings are stovepiped by the different data stores. Now Microsoft alluded to their knowledge graph. They've been talking about knowledge graphs forever. But the point is all these co-pilots are going to have to interact with a coherent semantic layer that has, that, that has consistent information across the platform from all the data stores, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, different query types. So you don't have to move data, you don't have to worry about what's the real single version of the truth. The reason that's important, because if you want co-pilots to actually take action for you, you've got to trust the data. Yeah. So to me, the real a, uh, race in AI is the data, and you've yeah. talked about this, it's really all about the data. The quality of the data is going to determine the quality of your AI. So the data platform, and, and Adam talked to you about this, he said our customers are in great shape because of the data platforms. They still have some work to do to make all those data yeah. platforms you Remember, know, coherent Swami's across tomorrow. data zones. So Swami's keynote's tomorrow. So my guess, he left some dry powder available for Swami. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say there's still going to be some to-dos. Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, I, I, the, think, I think that they're still, their metadata strategy is still very stovepiped. They need to address that, and that's something that I don't think you're going to see it tomorrow, but I think you'll see it within a year. What, I, think you're, I think you'll see announcements tomorrow, but like what Adam said was, we're going to reimagine things, and, that, and the fact that they have that cue, the way that this design, it does all that reasoning for you, that's a good step. I'm imagining that the data management strategy that they have on their data platform, because he told me that, and I said, is data management upside down? He goes, it's going to be the, the flip will script, okay? The, the, the script will flip. And that means that we'll probably see some changes on zero ETL, which he referenced again here. I'm sure we'll hear about tomorrow, but the data pipelining and the data strategies have to be enabled to handle that, that narrative. And the narrative at the keynote, really kind of put the, put the bow on the keynote, is that he laid out the three layer stack. Okay, layer one, infrastructure. Okay, layer one, infrastructure. And, and this is how the labeling was on the slide. Tools to build with LLMs and other foundation models. Layer two, okay. <laughs> the layer, foundation layer, models themselves. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Layer one. Layer one was infrastructure, infrastructure for FM training, foundation model training and infrastructure. So that's compute storage and, and networking and all the horsepower. Right. Layer two and the was gravitons tools and the to build and the, right. with, with tools to build with LLMs and other FMs. That's basically bedrock. Anthropic came on stage. Um, nothing new there. And then layer three, apps that leverage foundation models. Okay, what's that? What's that layer? Let's unpack that a little bit because clearly Microsoft has those apps. Right, they've yeah. got the full stack from, 
from silicon, even though you, we can, we, let's talk about their silicon strategy, but all the way up to their collaborative applications. I think that Microsoft is going to take that strategy because that's their only card to play. They got their built-in application. It's a strong they card. They got market share. It's, it's a hell of a card. It's their only card. But it's a hell of a card. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great card. <laughs> right. And it's a great card for them because they have data, they have existing stuff. AI, make, the Copilot makes those apps better and sexier and actually they're at risk by being developed. If you can port Java in two days, thousand apps, you can also port um, Microsoft. And by the way, he announced that uh, Matt Wood announced that .NET, I mean, um, Adam announced that they're going to have a .NET to Linux conversion. Yeah, of course. A lot of applications. That's a lot of Windows so running on how Amazon. Many, how many licenses fees is that, Dave? A lot of Windows running now, on Amazon. How much money is going to save a customer? Yeah. Port all your .NET to Linux, free. Boom, instant money. It's going to rain money for IT, so that's key. Then so layer three is going to be all about who writes the app. So an Amazon's card is ecosystem. And so we're going to hear the narrative come out again. Amazon's competing with the ecosystem. I'm sure you'll see some announcements that are going to come out that are going to be threatening to some companies. What um, do you mean? What do you mean by that? You think they're not going to be doing developing collaborative apps, are they? Well, Redshift came out. They compete with Snowflake. And yeah, so but yeah, sure. Yeah, but that's yeah. a, that's infrastructure. Here's my take. Amazon's that's database. Amazon's got. Yeah, that's still infrastructure. Amazon's got middleware. Amazon's got better infrastructure. There's yeah. no question about it. I thought Adam did a really good job of saying, look, because Satya, if you listen to his keynote at, at Ignite, talked about, we have more data centers than anybody in the world. And Adam said, yeah, but we have three AZs for every, or three yeah. data centers for every availability zone at, at, at a distance, 100 kilometers apart. Yeah. So that's huge. Yeah, he was, okay, throw, he was, throwing, he was throwing a dart at okay. Microsoft and, and Cloudflare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Cloudflare, <laughs> the super Cloudflare. But so, but so, Amazon's got better infrastructure. They're going back to their roots of undifferentiated heavy lifting. And look, the card that you're right, the only card that Microsoft has to play is we yeah. got apps. Yeah, and then their chip, they're way behind on generations on the chip. So they can't. Well, let's talk about that. Okay, so they announced two chips, Maya and this other chip, basically for yeah. for, for for training and inference. One general purpose cloud chip, that's their Graviton. Yep. They also announced their version of Nitro. It was definitely a copycat of what Microsoft, or what Amazon has announced. The question is, because it's ARM-based, and ARM is a standard, a well-documented standard, does that allow a company like Microsoft with a lot of resources to catch up to Amazon, or is it a case where there's no compression algorithm for experience? Is ARM standard that compression algorithm? David Floyer thinks yes. Yeah, I do. I think it's an opportunity, and that's why the emphasis around Nitro is critical. I think the chips are going to be all about chips and, uh, and, and design. And um, we talked about uh, this when I interviewed Andy Bechtenstein in 2018 about, he was the Rembrandt of the motherboard. It's like laying out a motherboard. <laughs> you got a size of the board constraints, and here the cloud is a power of constraints. <laughs> what Jensen announced on stage with the GPUs is a ar architectural change to provide supercomputing using connective tissue like Nitro and other interconnects around the processor, okay, and around the chips. That is huge, so I can, I can build an ARM, but if I can't build, architect late, low latency, real-time data pipelining, so Microsoft well, has to. That Microsoft's doing that. I mean, they well, are we'll building, see. they're building out their own Nitro, they're building out their own fiber optics. The, the, the issue is going to be, Dave, the customers will vote with their wallet. But if, it, if, if Amazon's got an alternative to OpenAI, and their shit's better, okay, and, and based on what he's showing out there, you can save money and energy. That's their hard. Their infrastructure's better. That's hard cash. There's, there's no question their infrastructure's better. Yeah. But, but what Microsoft's doing is making it so easy, and it, don't worry about the infrastructure down below, it's good enough. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the playbook. Good enough versus you know, non-differentiated heavy lifting with the best infrastructure. But here's, here's what I'll say, I want to I wanna make a point. Satya at his keynote basically said that Maya, their, their essentially their, their, their cloud chip, the highest performance chip in the business. So they leapfrog Graviton 3, guess what? It lasted a week, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Graviton 4 just leapfrogged you. So now the game begins. Yeah. And so we're going to see if there is a, an advantage of, of, of AWS having such a huge lead yeah. over the, the years, 2018 yeah. they started shipping Graviton, and, and they've been working with so, Annapurna for, since 2015. We're going to see whether or not that lead is sustainable. Yeah, uh, the chips will be one of those arms dealer kind of deals we see them leapfrogging each other and Amazon's got a clear lead, so Microsoft will be catching up and that's obvious. The thing that's going to come down to is security, right? The security's brought up multiple times. Um, you saw um, the, this agent technology, they're going to integrate CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and SOC compliance. That's huge, if you're building an app, having that kind of cloud 
infrastructure is going to be an advantage for Microsoft. Uh, and I think that's where they were slamming Microsoft on, on the security side, but like, if you're a developer and you're a business, you're going to have that. Now, I will say that from an app standpoint, you asked the question, I think Amazon's strategy is clear to me now. They're going to create an enablement layer just under the app layer, above the layer two. So the top of layer two, you see an abstraction to enable apps to be built, okay? And let the customers build their own apps. So there's, you're seeing this the conversation be around proprietary uh, assets, your data is your intellectual property. You're going to have complete security within your own instance. You can bring models in. Adam Slusher told me that the model's going to come into your own instance. They're going to bring Claude into your stuff and nothing ever leaves. You're, in, you're, you're working with that model and building your own, putting, interacting with each other. No one model rules the world, he said. And he's, again, brought that up again as a key point. Model, foundational model from LLMs at layer two is the new middle layer, Dave. That's what we've been saying on theCUBE, and it's playing out beautifully. And so if you're Microsoft and against Amazon, Amazon has to use the infrastructure advantage, performance speed, and provide value to customers. And I'm telling you, price performance, cost is going to be huge. Energy cost alone. Standing up GPUs on your own on bare metal, great. Energy bill, you can only have how many in a rack? How many NVIDIAs can you put in a rack before the power envelope is blown out? No, no question, but power is a Power is, a, is, is the a, new is motherboard size. Issue. Here's the question I have. So Adam was really doubling down on the, on the LLM optionality. I feel like that's something, because all these LLM vendors, John, are arms dealers. They're just like Jensen, right? They, they want everybody to use their LLMs. Now, of course, OpenAI is like the iPhone and AT&T when the iPhone first came out. They got, the, they got the exclusive. But everybody else is an arms dealer, and eventually OpenAI is going to be an arms dealer. So, my point is, it's not hard to replicate that optionality. Where it gets interesting is what you wrote about in your piece was the interaction between, for instance, Anthropic and the chips. That, you know, can that relationship between AWS and an Anthropic or other LLM vendors make the chips better and do tighter integration? And of course you're seeing Google yeah. complain about the Anthropic relationship. We have the relationship too. Yeah. So it's really interesting. But So what are your thoughts on that integration between the LLM and the silicon? Is that an advantage for AWS? Yeah, so first of all, Dorio is on stage from Anthropic. He said a few things. Um, I'll see, Adam set up with it's like three areas, customizing models, using use of proprietary data, and fine tuning and other features. Okay, when, and then they give some examples. Oh, we're using all these verticals. When, when the guy came on from Anthropic, he said, we're building enterprise features. Okay, so he said, we're doing three things. Training their stuff on Amazon, because everyone's like, because the whole, who is Anthropic really working with? He goes, we picked Amazon for mission critical workloads. What the hell does that yeah, mean? Yeah, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, okay, you mean Oracle? Like, it's, like, it's, like a, <laughs> it's like an official statement. I'm using you for that, and I'm going to use Google for this. I'm, I'm playing with everybody. They're an arms dealer too. So, so the, uh, it's, it's the world of arms dealing right now in technology. Anthropic is one. But Amazon's like, no, no, explain why you were with Amazon. Adam made him explain. And he said three things, okay? One. We're going to use Amazon's cloud to train our stuff, besides mission critical workloads, use, be, use, be part of bedrock, and then hardware silicon optimization. He actually said it on stage. Yeah. So they are definitely working with Amazon to give them an advantage on the silicon, and their mission critical workloads, I think is essentially their core product. So that's my guess, uh, and i have given so you does examples. A, does a company like IBM have an even greater advantage, now of course they've you know, with their own LLMs and their own silicon, because they control both. Yeah, well, I mean, they got Or, in the case of Amazon, with Titan and their own silicon. Well, well the, the problem, how we shoot for this stuff, and we talked about in the theCUBE, the leapfrogging also, not just in the chip game, it's happening in the LLMs. There's faster copycatting going on in LLMs, so the question is, is Anthropic the right horse for these guys, number one, and number two, if you're going to have only unique features on AWS related to Anthropic, uh, did they bet on the right horse? Because IBM might say, hey, we got some arm deals, and we have our own knowledge, we're going to bring that to the table. And they do. And they do. And the same with Google. So these, these generative AI factories that are emerging is going to be a big deal. Yeah, I see, I see I, uh, uh, Google, AWS, and IBM as three who have that advantage because they, two things, they have their own LLMs and they're designing their own custom chips. So they can do that tighter integration. 
And to the extent that an this Anthropic deal actually has meat on the bone, and I think it does because of the level of investment and in what you heard on stage today, that's another, it's not as good as owning the same team internally. It's like the old VCE model. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bolt a little storage on, a little yeah. compute on, and a little networking. But it's tighter integration. Look at the success that Oracle has had with that hardware software integration. So I think AWS, yeah. Google, and IBM have the advantage there over Microsoft. I think we're, I think the, the keynote validated obviously the articles we wrote and access we had to add them and the executives here. Um, I think where the dots connect in my mind is if I'm a customer, do I really care that there's a lot of proprietary and amazing cost and speed going on? I really don't care. If I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm going to say, like Intel processors back in the old days, do I care that Amazon's got all this cool nitro stuff and saves me energy and high performance, I get all that cost? I love that. I don't care. Now, don't be closed when it comes to running an ecosystem, so I think there's a game-changing uh, shift happening where the cloud players are the new global infrastructure like hardware, and, and it's now systematically built in cluster configurations, connective tissue, laying out geographic locations like a region, local zone, space, so the, the physical transit and transport of, of data is going to be rolled out. Okay, and, and, now you're getting into some really interesting areas of, it's a complete, you know, because of the power law, we suggested, okay, some of this stuff is going to be done on-prem. Is that going to be done in local zones? Is it going to be done on outposts? Or is it going to be done on Dell or, and or HPE this, infrastructure? This is why I like the DGX from NVIDIA, because someone has to build a connective tissue between where the data is. Now, whether that's outposts or something else. But it's got to be physically proximate. I, I think if you have physical, physical data on a premise or edge, you're going to have to have inference there. So it's got to still talk to the cloud. So yeah. to me, it, that's distributed computing. And I don't think Amazon will own all the customers. There'll be, have to be an independent third party. Maybe it's NVIDIA, maybe it's VMware. We don't know. We don't know. VMware, Dell, HPE, I don't know about uh, Lenovo, maybe. Dave, player. we're kicking off two sets here at AWS reInvent. The Cube is here, our 11th year. We are on the ground with our team coverage. We're in the MongoDB, Sugar King activation. The, the Emerald Lounge. Is what they're calling I got this. my VIP pass. <laughs> We're also got a stage in the press area. I'm going up there, Shelly Kramer, Dave are here, we got Sarbjeet here. All of our family and friends are here. George Gilbert. We love you all at Amazon, <laughs> reInvent. Um, stay with us all day for live coverage. We're sending it back to the studio. We got a great team up there. Howie Shoe's got an amazing panel. Tons of content. It'll be raining, Silicon Angle, Cube coverage all week. From Monday, yesterday, through Thursday, stay with us and keep in touch. Let us know what you like. We'll see you on the social media channels, Twitter, X, Threads, Facebook, Check and out the special reports too. I mean, they're amazing. Special reports, we've got so much content. On Silicon Angle. I think we, the definitive word of what's going on, Silicon Angle has the best coverage. Looking around the other sites, they got one or two articles. I think we've got like 20 flowing out now and tons of videos. So, you know, stay with us and continue to cover theCUBE with us. We'd love that you join us in this front row seat to this innovation. And we love having you along for the ride. Thanks for watching. We're back to you guys in the studio.